as we start our work on Chapter 9, Compos Composite Functions and Inverse Functions, we'll take a look at this. And these are the sections we'll be covering. In the real world, function frequently occurs in which some quantity depends on variable that in turn depends on another variable. For instance, a firm's profit may depend on the number of items the firm produces, which may in turn depend on the number of employees hired. Such functions where one thing is dependent on another are called composite functions. An example is given uh, in which uh, woman's shoe size in the United States and those in Britain are given by the function g of x, where the function is x minus 2, where x is the US shoe size and the function of x is the British size. Thus, the US size corresponds to a shoe size of 4, let's say a lady's foot is 4, while in Britain it will be the 4 minus 2, which gives you a shoe size in Britain of 2. Now a second function converts woman's shoe size in Britain to those in Italy. This particular function is given by f of x, where 2x plus 28, where x is the British shoe size now, and the f of x corresponds to the Italian size. The British size, remember the x now there is 2, corresponds to an Italian size of, again putting it in there, 2 times 2 plus 28 is 32. So it leads to this particular chart, and there's a nice little picture of shoes over there, and there are U.S. shoe size, and then using this function, you get the U.K. or Britain shoe size, and then using this shoe size, you get to Italy's shoe size. Uh, keeping in mind, this is usually thought to be like in inches. This one is sort of like in inches, but smaller. And these are in centimeters. Okay, little background. So the size N shoe in Britain corresponds to a size F of N shoe in Italy. Similar, similarly, size G of X shoes in Britain corresponds to, now here's where you get the composite, the F, the function of G of X shoes in Italy. Since the X in the corresponding function represents a U.S. shoe size, we can find the Italian shoe size which corresponds to a U.S. size, X, as the following. So this would be the function of G of X, where we know the G from previous page was X minus 2, and the X, recall from the states, U.S. size was 4, so that was x minus 2, and then 2 times that, coming from the Italian formula, if we then distribute this, we get 2x minus 4 from this distribution, plus 28. And we know that the 
English shoe size was two. So two times two, well, let me take a step back here. That was not the English shoe size. That was the American shoe size, that original X, because we're looking for F there, which is the US shoe size. Uh, two times four is eight. Eight plus 24 gave us the 32, which is right there. Okay. It is a little confusing, but again, there is a pattern to be followed. Now, as we look at the general formula of this, there is a way to write it, and also this picture may help you interpret what you're going to be doing. And let's look at this here. It says, thus, U.S. size 4 corresponds to Italian size 32. We call H the composition of F and G and denote it by F. Now this little circle here is, we call it often circle. It's not the letter O and it doesn't indicate multiplication. It's just F circle G or it's read the composition of F and G. F composed with G, or F circle G. Now, a visualization of this, and then here's the general rule before the visualization, is F circle G of X can be written this way. Now, notice since the G is inside this parenthesis here, this is what you always do first. Then you apply it to the F function. So we can visualize it as this is your machine, your function. You have an input of X that is treated through the G function. Then that value of X, which is now related to the G, goes into the F machine where that function finally gives you this output. Okay, so now for an example. And again, this is laid out very nicely here. So here is what we are given. So this is your f function, 3x. And there will be some value for G, for F there, I should say. And then you have this function for G, and there will be some value for this one as well. And there is the equation, the function. Now, this is something they're often going to do as you do these. They're going to write it this way. F circle G and switching them around G circle F. Now both our values are 5 and we'll get to the B in a few moments. So as we have to keep this in mind throughout what we're doing. So the first thing we're going to do is the one on the right, the G value. What is the G value? Well, it's a 1 plus X squared. And they have it right here for us, too. So we're going to do, as we start this, for our G value, the first one we're going to do is 1 plus X squared. Well, what, would, what did we say x was here? 5. So we substitute the 5. This gives us a 25 plus 1 is 26. We now have what our g value is. Our g value will be 26. 
That becomes our new X over here. We then take this X, put it in the F function formula. So our X we say is 26. So three times 26 is 78. So using this in letter A, we have found that our results are 78. Now, going on, when the letters are reversed, G circle F, and again, we're starting with a 5. We then go to our F value first, which is 3X. So we put our 5 there, 3 times X is 15. We now have our G value. We then put the 15 into our I'll be sure I'm in the right place here. We now have our, I should say, we now have our F value. We're now going to put it into our G value. Okay. So 3 times 5 is 15. That was our F value there because we're finding the F first. And then now we put it into our G, which is this. So we put our 15 there. We square the 15 and get 225. Add 1 to it. We get 226. So I haven't used my pen yet, so let me just do that. So when you have something like this, and then something like this, basically you're going to deal with putting the value they give you for G into the G formula up here. Then you find that value you'll put it into your F formula there. That's the order you do it with when you see something like this. When it's reversed, what you do is you put your variable in there first, find a value for this, then take this value and put it in there. That's, in essence, what the composite function does. And the symbolism for this would be as you see it right there. Okay, uh, let's go on to example B. Now in B, they're asking us just to substitute the letter X. So again, it will be F uh, circle G, which is written in a sense this way. And then later G circle F, which is written this way. So again, the key to it is we're first going to deal with the G function. Now you recall the G function was this. So, and our X is in a sense our X there. Now our F function, you recall was three X. Well, we know that this is our X now. So we go three times this for our F function and we end up with this. In fact, let me just underline that. Now, when we do G of F first, we're going to do the F now, which was 3X. That's our X. We then take the X, put it into our, this one here, where our x is 3x, so we go 3x, the quantity squared, gives us this. 
Now, an interesting thing. We had said originally that the F circle G, we had an X value of 5, and a G circle F had an X value of 5. If we put where the X is, we then get 3 plus 3 times 5 squared. That's going to give us 25 times 3 is... 75 plus 3 is 78. The same answer we got before. And here we're going to put it the 5 where the x is there. And we get 5 squared is 25 times 9 is 225 plus 1 is 226, the same answers we got. So the point that we're dealing with here is if you just solve these functions using the letter X, you can then take whatever value you have as a 5, put it in your solution, and that will give you the output of putting, instead of an X in there, a 5. So, rather interesting. Now, notice that here they're saying, in example 1 shows that, in general, that F circle G of X and F circle, I'm sorry, G circle F of X, they do not equal each other. Uh, 78 does not equal 226. Okay, well, here's another example. And again, I know that was a little bit confusing. So you may have to go over it again. And of course, as you practice it, you will develop your skill. So here we're given for our F function that, and for our G function, this. And here they want you to find F circle G, and then later G circle F. Okay? So again, the first thing you are to do is to find what G is. Well, G will be, as we say, F minus X. So there's our F X minus 1, I should say. Okay, looking at this carefully. Now, if this is our X now, we then go to our F value, which is the square root of X. Well, we're saying that x over here is this. So now we place this, which will be our new x value, under the radical sign. So that's this one. Now, in this one, we are doing f first. Well, remember, f is this one. So this is our value for f. We put it there. And now that's our x value for the g function. Well, what is the x value in the g function? We put right there, we put our square root of x minus 1. So f circle g is this. G circle F is this. Now, again, we're not going to check using a graphing calculator, but this does check. And again, example 
3 is a graphing calculator, so we're going to skip that. Now, in the reading, they say that sometimes we can do, instead of composition or composite, we can do decomposite or decomposition. And this is what this is an example of. So as we look at example four, we have the end function as being this. So how could you tease this apart, such as you get F circle G? And what we would think of here is that your F function would be X squared, and your G function is this. This is like a real easy one, where when we do F circle G, we're going to think of our G function first, which is this. This is our new X. And then we put this into this and get 7X plus 3, the quantity squared. So this is our G function. This will be the new x here. And then if this is our x, we just square it. Now, there's others, too. And this one is less obvious. It would be a little more difficult to get to. But here, your f function is this. Your g function is this. So where you take your this and put it where the x is. This is the new x there. Minus 1. And then you do the subtraction here and you end up with 3. Again, this would be much more sophisticated to figure that one out. Uh, going with the obvious in decomposition. And again, some of these are very challenging. Okay, this is going to be the first part of our lesson. Uh, we're now going to do inverse and one-to-one -one function.